Welcome to the first lecture in Unit 8. This is titled, One for You, Two for Me. And the quote we have is from Bug Bunny. It says, one for you, one for me, two for you, one, two for me, three for you, one, two, three for me. And this is our um, introduction to stoichiometry. Um, and really, when we talk about stoichiometry, it is all about ratios. And so our learning goals for this. The main learning goals for this is students will be able to understand the role of that mole ratio, and that's the big thing in stoichiometric calculations. And in using this mole ratio, students will be able to convert between moles of a reactant or product to another reactant or product. Um, and then lastly, students will be able to integrate their previous knowledge of dimensional analysis to include stoichiometry for any reactant or product. Big thing on that one, it's all about the math. And so this is a math heavy unit, but hopefully we're gonna step through it um, and really talk about the mole ratio and talk about converting and use our dimensional analysis to really help us uh, look at chemical reactions. So what we already know coming into this, um, that dimensional analysis is a useful tool for converting between two equivalent values. Uh, when we're looking at this, we use our statements of equality, we use our conversion factors setting up in everything. Um, so if we, in this example, we're looking at converting between 26.2 miles, which that's a marathon, into how many meters that is. And so when we look at both numbers in the vertical columns, so both numbers here, those are equal. And so this is where we get our statements of equality, where we say that one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. And we see that one right here. And we see that 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. And we see that one here. Those are our statements of equality that we can use to convert. And so in this case, we converted from 26.2 miles to meters, which is uh, 41,920 meters. What else do we know? We also know that the law of conservation of mass states that you must have an equal number of each atoms before and after reaction, um, but they can be arranged differently. So the law of conservation of mass means that we have to, whatever we start with is what we finish with. We start with the same number of molecules, we end with the same number of molecules, um, or the same number of atoms. And so that's the law of conservation of mass. What does this really mean? Balanced. equations. And so when we talk about balanced equations, we're talking about the law of conservation of mass. Now what we kind of should have taken from the lab, what we should have learned from the lab, is that titration is a useful tool for qualitative or quantitative and qualitative analysis. Um, so we can look at titration. Uh, careful measurements of products and reactants allow to determine uh, the termination of the ratio of products and reactants and that the ratio can be useful in identifying and predicting reactions. And so we learned in the lab and looking at the different types of iron and copper through that titration, we can use that to figure things out about the reactants and the products. So looking at what do chemical equations give us? When we're looking at this, we know that it gives us all the information, the qualitative information about is it a gas, is it a liquid, is it solid, um, is it aqueous, um, is there heat added to it? It gives us that information. But the, the chemical equation, what it really does is it shows us the mole ratio. And this comes from the coefficients. Now we see that we have a 1 to 1 to ratio. What this really means is that we have for every one mole of methane, two moles of oxygen, it produces one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Where do those coefficients come from? Well, we know that those coefficients come from that balanced chemical equation. And really when we're talking about mole ratio, when we're talking about chemical equations, we're always talking about a balanced chemical equation. So using the mole ratio, how do we use the mole ratio? Well, the mole ratio, looking at those coefficients in front of them, the mole ratio allows you to predict the amount of each product. Okay, how many moles, in this example, how many moles of water will be produced when 25 moles of methane is combusted? Okay, so I'm trying to figure out well, how much water am I going to get if I start with 25 moles of methane? Well, the mole ratio between methane and water is 1 
to 2. So 1 mole of CH4 equals 2 moles of H2O. And this gives us a ratio. It gives us a statement of equality that we can use in dimensional analysis. And we set it up where the units cancel, the moles will cancel of methane. We're left with the moles of water. And then we just multiply the top. 25 times 2 will give us 50. And that's what the mole ratio allows us to do. It gives us a ratio between reactants and products to help us predict how much of each thing we're going to have. So, possible mole ratios for this reaction only, just for this reaction when we're looking at it. One mole of methane produces or needs two moles of O2. Two moles of CO2 is two moles of H2O. One mole of CH4 is one mole of CO2. Now these ratios work for this reaction only. We'd have to have another reaction, we'd have to balance it if we have different things. But what we can say is that one, two, one, two, they equal each other. So we can say, we can compare methane to oxygen, or we can compare methane to carbon dioxide, or we can compare methane to water, or we could compare oxygen to carbon dioxide, or we can compare oxygen to water. We can compare them all to each other because they're all set in a ratio to each other of one mole to two moles to one mole to two moles. So other common examples of ratios that we see, um, a basketball game is one basketball per 10 people. Um, we know that there's 100 pennies per dollar. And the, in one day, you have one day per 24 hours. Those are examples of ratios. That's what the mole ratio is. It's just a ratio comparing two things. But we can use it in dimensional analysis to help us determine amounts of products and reactants. So it says write the correct mole ratio um, for the moles of TNT to moles of nitrogen gas. Now TNT is this right here. Nitrogen gas is right there. We should know nitrogen gas. We probably might not know TNT. But when we're looking at this, what we see is that we have, look at their coefficients, a 4 to 6 ratio. So what we have is we have a 4 to 6 ratio. So for every 4 moles of TNT equals 6 moles of nitrogen gas. And that would be our mole ratio, is a 4 to 6 ratio. Let's look at another one. So our next one, and it says, when we're looking at this, it says 35 moles of our um, potassium permanganate are present in a sample that is mixed with hydrochloric acid according to the equation below. And so we see our equation below. It says, how many moles of each product would you expect? Okay, so when we're looking at this, we have 35 moles of potassium permanganate. Well, we have to look of each product in the the math is going to be the same. So if I look at potassium permanganate compared to potassium chloride, it's a 2 to 2 ratio. So we set it up, and what that really means is 2 moles of that equals 2 moles of potassium chloride. So we set this up. We have 35 moles of our potassium permanganate and for every two moles of potassium permanganate will produce two moles of potassium chloride which when we look at this we multiply the top by two divide it by two and guess what we get these units will cancel we're left with 35 moles of our potassium chloride. Well, when we're doing this, the, the stoichiometry or what we look at the dimensional analysis, it's the same for everything. So what's the ratio between potassium permanganate and manganese chloride? Well, the ratio between that is a two moles equals two moles. 
So when we're doing our stoichiometry, we set it up two moles of potassium permanganate for every two moles of manganese chloride. Our answer will still be 35. And then we can look at it. What's the ratio between potassium permanganate here and let's say water? Well, it's a 2 to 8 ratio. So for every 2 moles of potassium permanganate, we have 8 moles of water. Okay, we work this one out, we'll get a little bit bigger number. So we multiply by 8, divide by 2, and we'll get a number right around 140 moles. Okay, and then we can look at it. What's the ratio between potassium permanganate and chlorine gas? Well, it's a 2 to 5. So for every 2 moles of potassium permanganate, we have 5 moles of chlorine which when we look at this, multiply by 5, divide by 2, we get right around 87.5 moles of chlorine gas. And so what we can do, because of this ratio, this 2 to 2 to 2 to 8 to 5 ratio, we can look and we can find the moles of each product produced just by simply starting with what we have using our dimensional analysis and finding our answer. All right, so let's look at our mastery level example here. It says, bounce the equations below and determine the appropriate mole ratio for the moles of octane, which is C8H18, to moles of car calcium carbonate. So when we're looking at this, we need to balance these, because why do we need to balance it? Because that's where the mole ratio comes from. So I'm going to show you a little trick in balancing um, combustion reactions. They can be a little bit difficult, because when you start dealing with octane and things higher than octane, you really get some big coefficients. You get some big numbers. So let's go ahead and just focus on this guy right here. So when we're looking at it, we see that we have on our reactant side eight carbons, so we need eight over here. So one times eight is gonna give us eight, okay? And then we go ahead and we look at our hydrogens right here. We go ahead and we see we need 18, so 18 divided by two is nine, or you can think two times nine is 18. Then we need to look at, since our carbon and hydrogens are balanced, look at our oxygens. So we look at our oxygens, we have two times eight is gonna give us 16 oxygens, and one times nine is gonna give us nine for a total of 25. Now if you think about this, what you can do is take 25, divide it by two, and we know that no matter what, that coefficient is going to be multiplied by 2 to give us our oxygen. So it's going to give us 12.5, which is not a whole number. But a trick you can do here, if you don't get a whole number here, what could you do to make all of these coefficients, that 12.5, that 8, that 9, whole numbers? Well, we can multiply the whole thing by 2. And that's a little trick you can do here. You can kind of do that, and it works really well with combustion. So you can think 12.5 times 2 is 25. And then you can think 8 times 2 is 16. And then you can think 9 times 2 is 18. And if you look, everything's balanced now. Um, just a little trick you can use with combustion that helps you out, because uh, combustion can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So when we're looking at this, we have our 225, raised it, but it's 16 and 18. Okay, that's our first equation. If we look at the other two equations, one carbon, one carbon, one, two, three oxygens, three oxygens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, that's already balanced. So what's our mole ratio here? It's a one to one to one. Really easy there. Next one, we have our two hydrogens, and we have two hydrogens, because one times two is two. We distribute that two within the parentheses. We have one, two carbons, two carbons, because remember we're distributing. And then we have our one, two, three, four, five, six, Oxygens, distribute, six. And then we look at our calciums, and guess what? One and one, so guess what? This guy's already balanced, too. A one to one to one ratio. Now, when we're looking at this, this is a tough question because what you're doing is you have multiple reactions that are taking you to your calcium bicarbonate. Here is your octane. Here 
is your calcium bicarbonate. So when you're doing this, the first thing you have to do is convert from our octane to CO2, and that is a 2 to 16, and then it's a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. And so we'll convert to CO2. Why do we convert to CO2? Because I see it here, and that can help us convert to our uh, H2CO3. And we can use that to convert to our calcium bicarbonate. And so we can use this to convert. Um, really the conversion is just between our octane and our carbon dioxide. Everything after that is going to give us our ratio throughout. So it's just a 2 to 16 ratio. So let's go ahead and keep going. Now when we look at stoichiometry essentially what we can do is we've already talked about what we call going from grams to moles to numbers or grams to moles to um, atoms. Uh, we've done this part before. Okay, and that should be familiar to us. Kind of don't pay attention to this right here, but it should be familiar to us. Anytime we start with moles, we multiply to go to grams, and we use gram formula mass to do that. If we're going to go from moles to number of atoms or molecules, we use Avogadro's number. Um, and when we're looking, the only thing that we're adding is the mole ratio helps us to go between a reactant and a product or a reactant and another reactant. This is the new part. And so the old part we should know, we should be able to see from there, is that here's the old part that we're used to, that we've already done, and it's the same thing for down here. And then the new part that we're adding in is just the mole ratio. So that's all we're adding to this. And so we can use this to go from moles to grams to everything. Okay, so let's look at our dimensional analysis. Now we have 5,000 grams of nitroglycerin, which is right here. And what we're doing is we're converting it into our moles of carbon dioxide. Well, I know from here, if I go from grams to moles, I need to divide by the gram formula mass or the molar mass to get my moles of my nitroglycerin. And then I can go from moles to nitroglycerin to moles of carbon dioxide by using the mole ratio. And you can see that. Here's the molar mass or the gram formula mass. It's right there. And then we see what's our mole ratio. Well, it's a one to three ratio. And we see that one to three ratio. The, the trick here and remember this from looking at previous stoichiometry or previous dimensional analysis. If you see the word grams, you need the gram formula mass of that substance. If you see atoms, guess what? You need Avogadro's number. And those are the statements of equality. The one thing you always have to have in dealing with a chemical reaction is mole ratio. So we're going to go through kind of how to do this. So let's jump into this problem right here. It says that 50 grams of iron reacts with excess oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. So how many moles of iron 3 oxide are produced? So remember, in stoichiometry, what sets this apart from everything else is we're dealing with a chemical reaction. So guess what we have to write? We have to write a balanced chemical equation. Everything must start with a balanced chemical equation. So we have our iron, which is Fe, plus oxygen, which is O2, produces iron 3 oxide. So Fe, which is going to be plus 3, oxygen, negative 2, crisscross these guys, and we get Fe2O3. There's our chemical reaction. Is it balanced? No. So let's go ahead and balance this guy out. We got to look. The oxygens are what's going to mess us up. When we're looking at this, we have a 2 and a 3. Remember what's a common factor when we see 2 and 3? 6. So we'll put a 3 here and a 2 there. That will give us a balanced oxygen. But now our irons aren't balanced. We have 4 here, 1 there. So how do we balance it? We put a 4 right there. So when we're looking at this, we see our mole ratios are here. So Let's highlight what we're dealing with. We have 50 grams of iron. There's iron. We have, we want to figure out how many moles of iron 3 oxide 
are produced right there. That gives us our mole ratio. That's the first thing that we're going to go ahead and write down. It's a 4 to 2 ratio. So 4 moles of iron to every 2 moles of iron 3 oxide. That's the first one we always write down. Then the next thing we look for is we look, it says 50 grams of iron. So it said grams by iron. So what do we need of iron? We need the molar mass of iron. Why do we need it? Because it said grams by it. So we need the molar mass. And what does the molar mass equal? The molar mass always equals one mole. So when we look on the periodic table, iron has a molar mass of 55.845. So for making this a little bit easier, it's rounded just to 56. Um, and so what we have is we write that one down. One mole of iron equals 56 grams of iron. We'll go ahead and make this a different color so we can kind of see it. Okay, so now what do we do? Whenever we start any stoichiometry problem, when we're setting up our dimensional analysis portion of it, we always start with what it gives us. It gave us 50 grams of iron. So we go ahead and put 50 grams of iron and set everything up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go until we get moles of iron 3 oxide. So if we look here, what does it say here? Grams of iron. What's the only thing that says grams of iron over here? That guy right there. So we'll put that on the bottom. The other half of the statement of equality goes where? On the top. And then we keep going. Why? Because we're not two moles of iron three oxide. What we see is we see that grams and grams cancel. Now we're looking at it. We have moles of iron right here. What goes down here? Moles of iron. What's the only thing that says moles of iron? That guy right there. We go ahead and put that guy on the bottom. Put the other half on top. And we see what happens to those units cancels cancels and 50 times 1 times 2 all divided by 56 times 4 will give us 0 0.446 moles of iron 3 oxide. So let's jump into another one. It says an unknown quantity of ammonium phosphate is reacted with excess barium nitrate and it produces 500 grams of ammonium nitrate. And it says how many moles of ammonium phosphate were originally were in the original sample. So we're looking at our chemical equation, ammonium phosphate, barium nitrate. Okay, we have to write a chemical equation for this. So ammonium phosphate, ammonium is NH4 with a positive charge. Phosphate is PO4 with a negative 3 charge. We crisscross these guys and we'll get ammonium phosphate is NH4, 3, PO4. There's ammonium phosphate. And then barium nitrate. Barium is Ba, which is plus 2. Nitrate is NO3, which is minus 1. Crisscross. And we get the other part of this reaction, which is Ba, NO3, 2. Now, if we're looking at this, because we talked about predicting products, what type of reaction do we have here? It's a double replacement reaction. So now what we're going to have is we're going to have ammonium nitrate. So ammonium is going to be bonded to nitrate. And so we go ahead and crisscross those, and we'll get NH4NO3+. Plus, and then we'll have barium phosphate, which barium phosphate is Ba3PO4-2. That's just a chemical equation. Now what do we have to do? We have to balance it. So we'll go ahead and balance this. Um, when we get this, we'll do a quick balance. So this is going to give us a 2, and then a 3, then a 6, and then we're left with that. So 2, 3, 6, and 1. So now that we have this, now we can start stoichiometry. That's the tough part because we got to get this chemical equation and then 
we can start everything else. So let's look at what we're dealing with. We're dealing with ammonium nitrate. Find that right there. Ammonium nitrate. And it wants to know how many moles of ammonium phosphate, which is right here. So the first thing we always write down is what? Our mole ratio. It's a 2 to 6 ratio. So 2 moles of our NH 43PO4 to equals our 6 moles of NH 4NO3. Okay, and then what we have is we have 500 grams of ammonium nitrate. So we need the molar mass of an ammonium nitrate, which rounded, it's right around 80. So that's the next thing we write down. We write that down. Why do we write it down? It said grams of ammonium nitrate. So if it says grams, we have to write down the molar mass. So we go ahead here and we write down the molar mass. One mole of NH4, NO3 equals 80 grams of NH4NO3. Okay, so now we have our statements of equality. We can go ahead and start working out our problem. So when working this out, we'll go ahead, start with what it gives us. It gave us 500 grams of ammonium nitrate. So 500 grams of NH4NO3. Start here, and we're going to go until we get moles of ammonium phosphate. So we look at it. It says grams right here. What's the only thing that says grams over here? That guy right there. So that'll go on the bottom. The other half of the statement of equality goes on top. And we look at what cancels. Grams cancel with grams. We're left with moles of ammonium nitrate, which is not what we want. We want moles of ammonium phosphate. So we go ahead. What's the only thing that says moles of ammonium nitrate? Well, six moles. So we go ahead and put that on the bottom. And then we go ahead and put the other half of that statement of quality on top. And we look at what cancels. Moles of ammonium nitrate cancel with moles of ammonium nitrate. We're left with our 500 times 1 times 2, all divided by 80 times 6, which will give us a number right around 2.08 moles that we started with of ammonium phosphate. Now, looking at dimensional analysis one last time, what we can do now by looking at this is we can take it We've gone from grams to moles, and we've gone from moles to moles. Now let's look at going from grams to grams, because we can do that. Okay, remember the trick to this is, anytime you see grams, you write the molar mass. So in this case, we're going from grams of nitroglycerin here to grams of carbon dioxide. Well, the only thing that we really added, there's the molar mass, we've been doing that, and here's the molar mass. The trick to this is, if you see grams, you always write the molar mass. You write that statement of equality. And guess what's always there? Mole ratio, because that's what stoichiometry is. It's all about that ratio. So let's go ahead and jump into an example. And it says, when we're looking at this, it says that cholesterol can be metabolized into carbon dioxide and water in a process very similar to combustion. And it's what is the volume of water produced by metabolizing 5 grams of cholesterol if the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. So when we're looking at this, very tough question, that's why it's a mastery level question. When we're looking at this guy, we're looking at it and trying to figure out, we have five grams of cholesterol, we want to figure out how much water, and we're looking at what is the volume of water. That's an extra added step. That's why it's a mastery level question. It's pretty tough. And so let's go ahead and let's start with a balanced chemical equation. And so I'll go ahead and I'll give that to you so that we can kind of speed it up and you can look at it. But remember, you got to start with a balanced chemical equation. So our C27H46 and then oxygen plus 38 moles of O2. Okay, and it produces 
27 moles of CO2 plus 23 moles of H2O. So the first step that we're going to do here, we're going to kind of take the density thing out of this. Let's go grams to grams and just really focus on that. So I want to go from grams of cholesterol to grams of water. So anytime I want to go grams, the first thing I always, always write down, cholesterol to water, I write down my mole ratio. Well, what's my mole ratio? My mole ratio is 1 to 23. So one mole of my C27H46O equals my 23 moles of H2O. Always write down the mole ratio to begin with. And I want to go grams to grams. So what's the other thing I need? I need molar mass. So I find the molar mass of my cholesterol. So one mole of my C27H46O equals right around 387 grams of C27H46O. Okay. Now I also want to find grams of my water. So guess what I need? Molar mass of water. So one mole of H2O equals 18 grams of H2O. Now, this will take me from grams to grams. Remember, whenever I do a stoichiometry problem, I always start with what they give me. What did they give me? They gave me five grams of cholesterol. So five grams of my C27H46O. Set that up. And then we look. What says grams of cholesterol? Well, the only thing that says grams of cholesterol is that guy right there. So guess what? That goes on the bottom. The other half goes on the top. And I'm not to grams of water yet, but I keep going. And I see that grams of cholesterol cancel. And I go ahead and I see that I have moles of cholesterol. Well, the only thing that says moles of cholesterol now is that right there. Is 23 moles of water. And I keep going because I'm not to grams of water yet. So guess what? I look at it and I see what cancels. Moles of cholesterol cancel moles of cholesterol. And then I look at it, moles of H2O. So I put moles of H2O on the bottom and then I put grams of H2O on the top. Put that other half. And there is my stoichiometry done all for me. And what I see is I will get right around 5.35 grams of H2O. And really in the problem, it wants what's the volume. So if I know that density equals mass all over volume, I could then use this equation. I know my mass. I know my density. And so when I'm looking at this, I can solve for volume. And if I have 5.35 grams of H2O, I have 5.35 milliliters of H2O. And that would be my volume. So in looking at this, our last one, um, this would be a great question to go into over in class and to kind of start with tomorrow. So why don't you go ahead and we'll save this one and we'll do this one in class when you come in.